Hi, this is John Craig with Performance Plus Tennis, and in today's video, we're going to work on a vital skill that everyone needs to improve in order to play their best tennis. And it's all about watching the ball, and what, what watching the ball is really all about. So like most tennis players, we've been told hundreds and hundreds of times to watch the ball. And in fact, we've said it to ourselves many times after we've missed a shot. So if we know that watching the ball is a vital skill, how come we're not better at it? And is watching the ball enough? Today's lesson, we're gonna break it down and help you see the ball better so that you can play much better shots. So what does it mean to watch the ball? And for me, I think just looking at the ball is not enough. And I want you to think more about looking for the ball rather than just looking at the ball. So what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the characteristics of the ball off your opponent's racket. And there are five key characteristics you want to really look for. The first one is directional, which we're always going to respond to first. And then we're trying to look for the speed, the spin, the height, and the length of the ball so that we can anticipate the ball with a high degree of accuracy. So the better you are at looking for the ball and anticipating the ball, you're going to be able to find contact much more consistently. So think less about just looking at the ball and seeing the ball and more about anticipating and understanding the ball that you're receiving. You've probably seen images of many top players that are taking you know, swings into the ball and their eyes are, are way off the ball as their racket's moving into contact and they still make a great shot. So how can that be? Well, it proves that their understanding of the ball they're receiving occurs long before contact. So they don't even have to look at the ball into contact to get a clean contact. Does it help? It does help and we're gonna get into that. But the real reality is, is that you wanna understand the ball you're receiving long before you receive it, so it's easy to find contact. So can we really watch and see the ball into the strings? And I think that science has proven that the human eye cannot process fast enough to actually even see the ball very clearly after it bounces. So in most cases, the player can't even see the ball. I certainly can't. So what are we really trying to do? Well, we're trying to anticipate the ball coming in long before it arrives, and then all we're trying to do is keep our head down and our eyes fixated so that we do not disrupt the swing path into the ball or the timing of the racket on the ball. So while we see a lot of professional players not watching the ball all the way in the strings, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is what we see Roger Federer do, and he's absolutely the best in history at it. He is so disciplined that he keeps his eyes on the contact long after the ball is gone because he is trying to stay calm and not disrupt his swing into and through the ball. So what you want to practice as much as possible is the idea of tracking the ball in and anticipating it and then following it all the way in and then making contact and keeping your head still as you play through the shot. And sometimes you might even see Roger Federer actually look into his contact point before the ball gets there because he sees the ball coming, he look, puts his eyes on the contact, he already knows where the ball is gonna be, and he just takes his swing right through. So it proves that the anticipation of the ball is key. And then once you're playing your swing, to get the best possible shot you can, you want to keep your eyes on contact and your head down. And while it takes a lot of discipline to do that, that is an essential skill to playing your best tennis. So you're probably wondering, how can I improve the skill of not disrupting my contact and hitting a higher quality shot? And like everything else, it just takes practice. So the first thing you really should do is just get out and practice with an opponent because what you don't want to do is feel distracted by an opponent, but rather just focus on placing the ball down and keeping your head still until you're done swinging or you hear the ball hit the back fence. Play it, hear it, and then you can look up. And then you can also do that and introduce footwork and movement. Play it. Just really avoid the tendency or the temptation to watch the ball leave your strings because most of the time when we do that, we actually pull our head too early and we disrupt contact and hit a poor shot and make a mistake. So. Get out and practice and just be on a court by yourself and just drop balls and challenge yourself just to keep your head still until you're done swinging. And that is the beginning of really learning this skill. 
So one of my favorite drills that I do with my students to help them not move their head during the swing is I place a cone down on the court that they're actually gonna look at after they're done playing the ball until they're done swinging. So it gives them something to focus on rather than trying to follow the ball off the strings. So the idea is to give them something to focus on, your attention on after you play the ball, so you're, you're not trying to follow the ball out of the strings, and yet you're really trying to keep your head still and your eyes fixed on what was the contact point long after the ball is gone. So after you perform some practice, now you're gonna work on implementation. So get out and practice with a, with a partner, and in the rally, you're gonna to try to do the exact same thing. Stay nice and calm, track the ball in, Keep your head still and play the ball. So you might be thinking, well, how can I keep my head down when it's a fast rally? Well, the reality is you have a lot more time than you think you do between shots. You're gonna play through your shot quickly and then you're gonna look up and then you're gonna be able to get ready for the next ball and you really have a longer interval than you think you do. So resist the temptation to feel like you've got to get ready for the next ball before you've actually executed the ball you're on. You know, oftentimes tennis players just get anxious and think they have to get ready for the next ball. But if your ball doesn't go over or land in the court, there is next ball, no next ball anyway. So why not just take your time and take really good care of each ball one at a time. And when you keep your head down and you relax, it gives you a sense of feel and trust and how to focus on how to play through the ball to get the result you'd like. And it'll also help you to play to targets because when you play to targets, you feel where you're gonna to play to the target. You do not look at the target. So all of these things, the anticipation of the ball, the judgment of the ball, the tracking of the ball, combined with keeping your head still as you play through contact will improve your shot performance significantly. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from today's lesson. Subscribe, like, and leave your comments down below and really work on these skills because the skills of tracking and anticipating the ball and then keeping your head still as you swing through contact are essential to playing your best shots. And if you'd like to learn more, check us out at performanceplustennis.com where we have additional free lessons, a VIP membership, courses, and much, much more. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.